the second half of chapter one, I would like to introduce some of the benefits of regular exercise, and we'll talk more about these later. And also mention some of the risks with physical ex exercise and with uh, exercise testing. So there are many benefits of regular exercise. Some of these you're aware of in an exercise physiology class, and we'll talk also more about these. So in the, there's an increase in VO2 max, max oxygen uptake. There's, an in, there's a decrease at a given absolute exercise intensity of breathing, so of, of ventilation. The myocardial oxygen cost, so how much oxygen the um, uh, heart muscle is using, that is decreased. Let me go back to my... Uh, we've been looking at heart rates and blood pressures, and those are decreased at a given submax exercise intensity. We'll talk about capillary transit time, and we've already talked a little bit about lactate. Uh, so there's several benefits of regular exercise. In terms of the cardiovascular disease risk, uh, those are also decreased with regular bouts of exercise. Blood pressure is decreased. Um, uh, there's lower amounts of um, uh, serum triglycerides, so fats in the blood, total fat. Uh, for those that are diabetic or close to being diabetic, there's a reduced insulin need, so a greater glucose tolerance. I mean, that's amazing. And um, there's a decreased morbidity on mortality, so getting sick or even dying. Uh, these are decreased with uh, uh, regular exercise, so lower death rates from coronary artery disease. And there's other benefits that you know, we are aware of. Uh, there's decreased anxiety, decreased depression. There's actually improved cognitive function. So a way to study for a test is to go take a run or continue to run. I mean, don't stop exercising if you're studying for something. And for those of you that may be working with older adults, if they have chronic um, physical activity, if they've been doing it for a while, um, independent living in older adults is huge. And other benefits, there, it's a feeling of well-being, there's... Um, uh, better performance at work, recreational sport activities, a reduced risk of fall and injuries in older adults. That can be really, really big. So there's many benefits of regular physical activity, and we'll talk more about a couple of these, and some of these you may know already. And you know, most people know that physical activity is good. They may not understand some of the specifics, but uh, we want to keep getting people to be active. And there are risks, although very minimal risks, of, of um, uh, death with exercise. So here are the absolute annual risk of exercise-related death among high school or college athletes. Only one in 133,000 for men, only one in, in almost a million, or 769,000 for, uh, for women. And here's a table out of our book that... Um, uh, looks at some of the risks and putting these risks into perspective. So very little, there is a chance, but you know, little chance of, of events that may happen with, um, with exercise. And it seems to be that um, it's more vigorous exercise. So um, vigorous intensity exercise, only one every year for every 15 to 18,000 people. And there can be some risk with exercise testing as well, and that's why we will go over um, some of the risk factors and make sure clients complete an informed, uh, an informed questionnaire so they know what what um, is it being what they will be doing or what's expected in some kind of fitness test. But here the data show there's maybe six cardiac events per ten thousand. And here are some 
uh, research. So here's references on the left hand side, but here's some research on like a number of deaths or hospitalizations during exercise testing. And especially if we do submaximal testing, the risks are very low. Um, for some of you that may be interested more in cardiac rehabilitation, again, um, the complications are, are very low. So mortality rate appears to be six times higher. If, if it's facilities without um, the ability to successfully manage cardiac arrest, so wherever you are, they should have you know, appropriate facilities there. Um, So we as healthcare professionals should know the pathological conditions. We'll talk a little bit about that and the exercise related events and children and adults and how to properly evaluate those. And we just need to be, just to need to be aware of this. Uh, and so the bottom line, even though um, you know, there's possibility of risk, uh, large body of scientific evidence, physical activity is, is beneficial. And it can delay premature mortality, reduce risk of, of health conditions. Um, and these are our guidelines for so 150 minutes per week of moderate, um, 75 per minute minutes per week of, of vigorous activity, some kind of combination. Uh, and it can be broken up. And this is you know, maybe different than some of the definitions I had in an earlier video, def different than maybe physical ex or exercise, but in terms of health benefits, it's really not that much that's required. And even though the risk associated with exercise can increase, especially with vigorous, the benefits um, substantially outweigh these risks. Uh, and if we can get people to re physically to regular, regularly exercise, um, you know, those risks are even less. And according to ACSM and the American Heart Association, physicians should not overestimate the risks of exercise because the benefits of habitual physical activity substantially outweigh the risks. So this was a short video um, on the second half of um, chapter one and more of an introduction to uh, the ACSM guidelines for uh, for exercise testing and program design.